Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. This is a series of uh, lectures where we talk uh, about the different cells of immune system. Today we are going to talk about eosinophils of the immune system. Eosinophil is kind of, uh, you know, snubbed from many books and places. People don't want to read about it, but eosinophil plays a very, very important role. They play a really vital role in the process of immune system. Uh, they have an integral role in immunity. So wh what is the origin of eosinophil in our body, the structure of eosinophil, the location of action, the mode of action, the function, all this question will be answered in this video. Okay, so let's start with the origin of eosinophil and you can clearly see how exactly the eosinophil gets originated starting from the hematopoietic stem cell then there is myeloid progenitor cell and among the myeloid progenitor cell there is granulocyte monocyte progenitor cell so simply i can say that the overall development and growth of the eosinophil will be done in the bone marrow because the whole process of hematopoiesis or the process of blood cell developments are done inside the bone marrow and particularly they are produced from granulocyte monocyte progenitors or GMP progenitor. This one is GMP progenitor, granulocyte monocyte progenitor. From there they separate to monocyte and granulocyte progenitor. From the granulocyte progenitor, neutrophil, eosinophil and basophil, all three cells are produced. All three white blood cells are produced. And we have talked about new, neutrophil, we have talked about basophil in our separate videos. If you want to know about the details on those cells, uh, you can watch those videos. But now this is the time to talk about the eosinophil. So what is eosinophil? Here, this is how it's produced. Uh, and the development of eosinophil is influenced by specific cytokines such as interleukin-3, interleukin-5 and granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor, GMCSF. We know that the dendritic cells uh, production and dendritic cells production also is inf uh, influenced by GMCSF. GMCSF is kind of a growth factor that influences growth of various kinds of cells in our body including this eosinophil dendritic cell and all. Okay, so remember interleukin-3, interleukin-5 and GMCSF involved and influence the uh, growth and maturation of eosinophils. Next uh, is uh, it, they are released into the bloodstream after the maturation is done. Now the structure of eosinophil is very very prominent. The eosinophil's look and structure is very prominent. Granular leukocyte which are bilobed nucleus. You can clearly see this is lobe number one, this is lobe number two connected by a small uh, nuclear structure like this. So it's a bilobe, looks like a headphone. See remember, the nucleus of eosinophil looks like a headphone. Okay, And uh, the bright eosinophilic granules are present in the cytoplasm which are pink in color. You can see although this is red in color shown but actually this, uh, these are uh, all granules, pink color gl uh, granules, also known as eosinophilic granules that are present in the cytoplasm. And this is lobe number one, this is lobe number two, bilobed nucleus. Uh, granules contain a major basic protein or MBP, okay, which in, uh, involves in the parasite toxicity. It has eosinophil cationic protein, ECP, have antimicrobial properties, eosinophil Peroxidase EPO, which has involved, which is involved in the process of ROS reactive oxygen species production. It has eosinophil derived uh, neurotoxin EDN, which has an antiviral property. And there are some, so so among you can see that among these granules, even there are not fixed one category of granules. There are four categories of granules: MBP major basic protein, ECP eosinophil cationic protein. Eosinophil peroxidase EPO and eosinophil derived neurotoxin that is EDN. Okay, so these are all four different kinds of granules present. And then there are some surface markers uh, CCR3, FC, Epsilon R1 receptor for the activation of IgE mediated, uh, you know, uh, allergic response, CD11B and CD18. Okay. These are all CCR3, CD11B and CD18 are the surface markers of eosinophils. Now location of action. They circulate in the blood in very very low number under normal condition. But they found in tissues like gastrointestinal tract, GI tract, respiratory tract and gastro uh, and genitourinary tract. Basically three, uh, one, three of the most important tract of the body, GI tract, respiratory tract and genitourinary tract of our body. They are present there. In the blood, they are circulating in low numbers, but these are the places where they are found. And they migrate to sites of infection or inflammation, especially during allergic responses, 
parasitic infections. Remember that. Okay. So if there is allergic response, they are going to be present, migrate from bloodstream to those tissue nearby. And in case of parasitic infection, not in bacterial or viral, some cases of viral infection, but generally they are activated in cases of worm infection, helminth infections. Okay. Function. Now, defense against helminths and large parasites, the parasites whose size is so much bigger than the immune system cells are uh, the things are taken down by these uh, uh, eosinophils, okay? They modulate allergic responses, they cause asthma and atopic dermatitis and they produce cytokines, interleukin-4, interleukin-5 and interleukin-13 are the cytokines produced by uh, in eosinophils. They contribute to tissue remodeling and also can do fibrosis. That's why I told you that most of the people they don't know about the function of eosinophil. Eosinophils function is not to go up against the helminths although that's the primary role that we can connect to but they can also modulate allergic reaction, they can modulate uh, the tissue remodeling as well as the fibrosis of the tissue can be triggered and they can regulate immune response by interacting with other immune cells too because they can also release some cytokines like interleukin 4, interleukin 5 and interleukin 13. What is the mechanism of action? If you look at the recruitment and activation, uh, recruited to inflammatory sites by chemokines. Release of CCL11 and CCL24. Whenever there is a release of CCL11 and CCL24, these chemicals cause the migration of these uh, eosinophil towards the specific tissue from where they are released. They are activated by cytokines like interleukin-5, IgE antigen complexes, and complement components like C3A and C5A which are part of the anaphylatoxins, okay. So these are uh, the recruitment and activation, they require IL-5 or they can be activated with the uh, allergy reaction, Ig mediated allergy reaction or they can be activated by uh, the complement proteins like C3 and C5A. Mechanism of action degranulation. Degranulation of eosinophil triggers most of the reactions in the body. So degranulation, you can see that there are granules like MBP, ECP, EPO, EDN. These are all granules and if they really start releasing these components, you know, when they start releasing the component, when there is a parasitic infection or where there is a stressful condition of the cell or in some kind of inflammatory diseases of the body, they start releasing the granules, okay. Release of granule content onto the parasites or the allergens. If there is any allergen, they can also trigger that, okay. So a false trigger can be done during the presence of allergen. So the major basic protein on MBP damages the parasite and host tissue. So, you know, the helminths, the helminths look much, much bigger. Let's say this is a helminth structure and compared to that, the cell is very, very small, even smaller than this. So, release of this granule components are going to damage and create pores in the helminth membrane that can damage the helminth. That is one thing. Particularly, the major basic protein do that, MBP does that. Eosinophil cationic protein or ECP has antimicrobial effects. Eosinophil peroxidase EPO catalyzes react reactive oxygen species production which can lead to further damage to the pathogen including the helminths, okay. Now second one is a cytokine and a mediator secretion. So they can secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines like IL-4, IL-5 and IL-13. All of them can cause inflammation, pro-inflammatory cytokine is produced. They release lipid mediators like leukotrienes and prostaglandins okay upon releasing of leukotrienes and prostaglandins they can cause anaphylactic reactions and also the inflammation can be increased they, they can amplify the inflammatory inflammation inflammatory response so eosinophils have a role in inflammatory response as well they interact with the t cells and other immune cells to modulate the responses now Tissue remodeling is something that can also be done by eosinophil because the eosinophil they also release matrix metalloproteinase or known as MMPs, matrix metalloproteinases to remodel extracellular matrix. Secrete the growth factor known as transforming growth factor beta or TGF beta and release of this TGF beta cause fibrosis and this fibrosis in the tissue where there is wound and damage can lead to wound healing and start starting of the wound healing. Contribute to chronic inflammation and tissue damage in allergic diseases. That can contribute to chronic inflammation and tissue damage in allergic diseases. Okay. So what are the summary 
of eosinophil it's not only the job of eosinophil to protect you from the helminths so obviously that is one thing they are specialized granulocytes up against parasitic infections and parasitic defense and allergic responses of your body second release toxic granules granule proteins and cytokines and also mediators third they contribute to both protective immunity and immunopathology of your body because they can also cause fibrosis of the wound and the last is the play roles in the inflammation tissue remodeling and fibrosis i already mentioned that so these are the important features of eosinophil depending upon the requirement it, it can switch its activity the percentage of eosinophil present in the circulatory blood is very low but when there is an infection the site of infection or inflammation they are proactive okay i believe you have a clear idea about eosinophils now and you have all the details about the note if you like this video please hit the like button share this video to your friends subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future and watch this complete series of immunology to understand and become a master of immunology thank you bye